In their desperate attempt to avoid real science, flat earthers have declared that gravity doesn't exist. More specifically, that mass does not attract mass. They have to, because gravity would collapse a giant pita bread planet into a tasty globe-shaped pastry. Last time we were reviewing flat earther Austin Witsit's claim that he actually did a real science experiment. We did actual science and I used a Van de Graaff generator, which, which manipulates electrostatics, and I made the object change weight, fall at a different rate, go up and down just by manipulating the electric field. And that's what we have on the earth. We have an electric field that has a, a hundred volt per meter increase. And when I flipped it with my Van de Graaff generator, it made the object float. So I proved that that's a cause of things falling down and why they fall down. And that's that every wait, object wait, that wait. exists is electrostatic. So. Before we move on, I'll cover some real physics using the textbook on electromagnetism I used at university. But don't worry, it doesn't require any math to destroy flat earthers. The first topic of any electromagnetics course is electrostatics and Coulomb's law is the foundation. The only thing you need to know is that electrostatic force is repulsive for like charges and attractive for other charges. It's the same in electrostatic fields. One side of the field is positive, one side is negative. An object in that field will be attracted to the side of the field with the opposite charge. Second, an electrostatic field is static. It's in the name. There is no flow of electricity unless something changes and makes the electricity flow. And third, most objects have the same amount of positive and negative charge. They are neutrally charged, so they're not really affected by an electrostatic field. And that's it. That's all the physics you need to know. So armed with this, let's review what he said. And that's what we have on the earth. We have an electric field that has a 100 volt per meter increase. Hey, he got that right. He references the Feynman lectures on physics, which are available online for free. Volume 2, Section 9 talks about the electricity in the atmosphere. There is a 100 volt per meter gradient mentioned here. But Witsit hits a dead end immediately with the first pair of diagrams, since the mere presence of a human will equalize the gradient. The same thing happens inside a building. But for a moment, let's do what Witsit does. Pretend that doesn't happen. And let him explain how he imagines this electric field makes things fall. It goes up 100 volts per meter. Okay, So there's positive charge, potential charge increasing up from the surface, 100 volts per meter. We have equipotential increase, which means there has to be a surface above us acting as the second Gaussian surface. And that's what gives you this downward flow of electricity on the earth. So that's what gives you the downward bias. There are so many things he gets drastically wrong here. The field is not equipotential. It is constantly decreasing with elevation. If he had read his own citation, he would see that. A Gaussian surface is not a real physical surface. It's a mathematical tool to calculate the flux of a vector field. But don't worry if you don't know what that means. Wits it doesn't either. He thinks it's a physical surface. A Gaussian surface is a closed 3D surface. Here you see examples of valid Gaussian surfaces on the left and invalid ones on the right. Doesn't look so good for the dirt pizza. You can approximate a Gaussian surface with an infinite plane, but Witsit doesn't think the dome firmament is an infinite plane. He thinks it's a physical container. And it's actually a reflective surface that creates this rainbow, and it is the firmament. For whenever the earth was flooded, the heaven's gates opened up and flooded the earth. So when you see the entirety of the rainbow intact, it is showing you that, in fact, the, the windows and the gates to the firmament have not been opened up. And rest assured, the earth cannot be flooded right now. You can see the physical, literal evidence of it live time, that it's still all closed and enclosed over top of you. A solid reflective surface that is a physical container holding in all the air and holding out the water cannot be a Gaussian surface. He is contradicting himself. Also, there is no flow of electricity in a static field. Electricity flow is the movement of electrons and electrons are negatively charged. So even if there were a flow of electricity, as he claims, it would be up, not down. 
Witsit is completely clueless. He is arrogantly clueless. He obviously never studied this topic in the slightest, and he has the misplaced hubris to talk as if he's an expert. There are no words. If you actually studied this topic and are currently bleeding from hitting your head on something, make sure you share your frustration at Word Salad Witsit in the comments. I'm sure he will never read them because a narcissist like him cannot stand to be confronted. Now, how does the pretentious salad shooter think he tested this in an actual science experiment? And that's what we have on the earth. We have an electric field that has a 100 volt per meter increase. And when I flipped it with my Van de Graaff generator, it made the object float. So I proved that that's a cause of things falling down and why they fall down. And that's that every wait, object wait, that wait, exists wait. is electrostatic. So. so there's a 100 volt per meter field and he flipped the field. Flipping the field would mean applying a slightly larger electrostatic charge in the opposite direction. This would reverse the direction he claims is causing the downward direction. Then everything, everything in this field would immediately accelerate up instead of down. Awesome. Let's see this happen. And whenever we manipulate electrostatics, we can make things levitate. We can make things go up or down and we can actually change how fast they go down. We can also manipulate the weight of an object simply by manipulating electrostatics. And of course, that's how science actually works, is you do an experiment that shows you what the cause of the effect is, and you can manipulate electrostatics and cause the effect of downward acceleration, commonly referred to as gravity. Austin used these two plates and applied the flipped charge to these plates, and that little piece of styrofoam did move up. But did this prove that electrostatics is the reason why things fall instead of gravity? Look at the setup. These two plates are about 10 centimeters apart and applying Witsit's incorrect 100 volts per meter claim, it's incorrect because they're inside a building. This means there is a difference of about 10 volts between the top and the bottom before he turned on the Van de Graaff generator. Applying Coulomb's law, all you would need to flip the field is 11 volts in the other direction. But how much charge did he apply? A tabletop Van de Graaff generator generates thousands of volts. All he needed was 11, so he could have just used two 9-volt batteries stuck together. And why did he use that little piece of styrofoam? According to his claims, everything must reverse direction. Why not put some large metal object in there? The answers are obvious. He needed both to force the outcome. The high voltage is needed to induce a charge on the object. And the object must be an insulator so it can hold that charge. Word Salad demonstrated something that's been known for a long time. A high voltage can induce a charge on an insulator. Then, by Coulomb's law, there is more upward force than the downward force of gravity. Witsit didn't show that gravity didn't exist. He proved that if you apply enough force, you can counter gravity. And everyone that's ever been to the gym knows that. He has been asked why he didn't do this to something heavy, and he got agitated. But a negative charge on the top that causes it to float in an electric field, right? Uh, it's If you flip the polarity of the field, the electrostatic induction or transference of the medium in the object will cause it to levitate, yeah. Lead. Yes. You know what's crazy is you guys just don't understand it, so... Basically, you're like, oh, what's it? What's it so stupid? He thinks electrostatics pulls things down to the earth. Well, you could change the charge of objects, and uh, why don't things levitate? It's because electrostatics, although ten to the thirty-six power stronger than gravity's even claimed to be, is very weak overall. In fact, to levitate an object, you have to introduce a good amount of charge. Like I, when I do it with my Van de Graaff generator, iron filing, styrofoam, mm -hmm. hair, paint chips, all any object I can think of that's small enough. Small enough, you say? I had like 200,000 volts within these uh, two Gaussian surfaces and I can make things levitate. So in order to make something heavier levitate, you would have to introduce a ton of electrostatics, but that's how physics works. It's adorable that this simpleton thinks he understands how physics works. It's like a child that got a toy steering wheel in their car seat thinking they're actually driving the car. What you see here is wits it changed the rules. No longer does electrostatic sets the bias. Now you need 200,000 volts just to reverse the direction for styrofoam or paint chips. And why does he have paint chips laying around? Put your answer in the comments. 
So he disproved his whole point here. Electrostatics did not set the bias. It just applied a force that counters gravity. Which is so stupid. He thinks electrostatics pulls things down to the earth. I actually did a proper test applying Witsit's specific claims. Tragically, so did my ugly identical cousin McFlatty. Three, two, one. Interesting. I'll link McFlatty's test in the YouTube comments and save the analysis of his test and show you my test in an upcoming video. I know I said I was going to do it in this one, but explaining the word salad buffet took a while and I summarized it. In the meantime, here is the spare circuit board I had fab for the setup. If you figure out what it is, post it in the comment. First to get it right, can have it. You'll need to meet me when I'm out on the road trip because I suck at mailing things out. So click the subscribe button and the bell so you get that notification when the video comes out.